That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I'm here with Paul Wilson from Arvio, and uh, they've got a pretty impressive bit of kit here, and Paul's going to run us through some of its features, and I'm very interested in what's in the bottom compartment. I'll tell you about that last, because that's the most interesting part. Okay, cool. So we'll start at the top, okay? Yep, start so at the top. We decided we'd build a system that worked on on-grid and off-grid, Yep. and we didn't have to explain anything to the customers or give them any excuses why it didn't work in a blackout. So the first thing we needed was a really powerful inverter. Yep. So we used Selectronic, which is made locally in Churchside Park in Melbourne. Nice little place. We're based in Mitcham. This inverter here can give us about 18,000 watts of peaking power, which is pretty powerful. We can run a whole switchboard of a house uh, for about 30 minutes and give you about 11 kilowatt hours, and for about um, continuous use of seven and a half kilowatt hours, seven and a half kilowatts of peak power. So the inverter here is a very powerful inverter. It takes 48 volt DC input. Um, it's electronic have been waiting for a long time to develop a remote access system, so we did, couldn't wait for them, so we developed it ourselves in-house. It's called Emax, which you can have a look over here. It's a tiny single board PC. It runs on one watt of electricity. And we plug it into the bottom of the SP Pro inverter, into the USB port here, and it gives full remote access programming to the inverter. It's plugged in here with a little 12 volt plug supply. So it runs on one watt. So we just plug that into a cigarette lighter jack that we give you. That's cool. We plug that in there, and you've got power. So not another power point and another no more plug power points, 12 yep. volts. Yeah, great. It'll boot up itself. It automatically logs on through the internet and connects through to our server. There's no port forwarding required, no IT skills. Your grandmother can set this up. Okay, maybe. So you plug that in, turn it on. It automatically connects back to our server. Then you go home, and you go, I'm going to program the system now. Instead of sitting in the customer's garage from 4 p.m. until 9 p.m. programming your SP Pro. You go home, you download a program called Proxy from a website, you type in your email address and the password we give you, you click it, it opens up all the inverters around the world that you're allowed to program based on the number of Emacs devices you bought. You can plug in and connect to three inverters simultaneously. That's that's really sweet. So that takes away the end of the day drama. Yep. You do your the hardware install, you leave. That's exactly right. You open a beer, sit down, yep. sorry, a cup of tea, and sit down no, and uh, <laughs> and then do the hard part, which is the programming. Exactly. Yep. So you log into the inverter. Now you thought that was pretty clever, but the problem is we're running through a serial port. And serial port meant you do one thing at a time. That wasn't good enough. So we built a multiplexer into here. So you can log into the inverter multiple times. So while it's still logging data on our server, you can log in and program it at the same time. You don't have to tell it to stop logging data to program it. The beauty of that is you can log into the inverter multiple times on one screen. So you can log into Quick View, Data View, and Configuration Menu on the one screen from the one inverter and program it while you're seeing the changes happen. At the same time, if you're a little bit stuck, you can call up Glenn, or you can call up Selectronic, and you can call Rob Moss, and you can say, Rob, I need help. And he goes, no worries, I'll log in as well. So he can log in from Churnside Park into the same inverter in the same session and help you change the settings with you. While he changes it on screen, your screen changes as well. All right, that's never been possible before. No, it hasn't been possible. And then when you're finished, if you press configure, type in the password and send, then you'll program it. If Rob presses configure, types in the password, then he'll program it. Right. While that's all happening, it's still uploading data and caching it. Yep. Now, if the internet connection is lost, the client changes to NBN, and you plug it in again, it works. There's no setup required. You have to get into the modem, put in port forwarding, hope for the best, it just works. Yep. You can also do Wi-Fi, that's a new feature, but then the, the problem is if the client changes the Wi-Fi password, it won't work, obviously. So to fix that, you plug your mobile phone in the bottom of the US, USB port, open up the app, type in the Wi-Fi password, press save, and then it reconnects again. Right. Okay, okay. So that solves the problem of Wi-Fi. If you really want to use yep. Wi-Fi, I would suggest that you use a Cat5 cable instead. Yeah, cool. Hang on. Okay, so that's the inverter, that's the Emax. Now you can do three-phase as well. So if you're configuring a three-phase system, you can log into three inverters on one screen, log into it three times, and have config, data view, and programming window. Three times with nine windows, program all your phases, press configure, 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 and it saves the whole thing and programs it. Wow. Now then if you made a mistake, you go back in tomorrow, and you log in again, and you change it. You have to drive back to site again. Yes. So Emax was developed so by it's us. A, it's a true remote access it's a true facility. remote access, and yeah. it's, it's got bank level security, yep. so it's SSL certificates, all the data stored on our server for life. If you lose internet, it'll store data for 10 years. Oh right, so it does catch up. Yep, and if you replug it, it resynchronizes. So you can have a houseboat floating around Lake Yildon, it loses mobile range, yep. it comes back in again, it recaches. Right. So if you're out of range of mobile, the app still works. It yep. works on your local LAN, finds the device through a special technology we developed and you can still start the generator, turn relays on and off locally and read all your data even though you've got no mobile, no, no mobile reception. 
when you come back into range it recaches again. Wow, and all that little black box. All that box, it runs on one watt of electricity. <laughs> it also can control Samsung air conditioners, Daikin air conditioners, Philips lighting systems, Zender air, air ventilation systems, robotic surveillance cameras, relays, the whole lot, all in one box. If you have a new technology you want to automate, you just send us an email and say, I'd like to include this on your program, and we can develop it and put it in there as well. Cool. So that's Emacs. Yep. You thought that was good. Wait, yep. there's more. This is a charge controller by a local company called iMark. It's so made, in, iMark? I'm made in North Melbourne. It's 150 volts to 500 volts DC input and 48 volt DC output. This is starting to look like an all Victorian solution we got here. It's all made in Melbourne. Yep. Wow. Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. So Chanside Park, Mitcham and North Melbourne. <laughs> okay. And I was made in Box Hill. <laughs> Well, that's where I was born. I don't know where I was made. I think I was made in Blackburn. Okay, down the bottom here we've got a DC circuit breaker, 250 amp. So it's a nice big clunky thing. And you can current limit that up here as well. Over here we've got a DC shunt to, to control the, to measure the power going through the storage system, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. You can't look down there yet. We've got a motorized circuit breaker here. We can turn that off and on remotely. So we can turn off the, super, or the the storage device down here, I'll tell you about in a second, one at a time. So this is the main isolator, and each storage device we're trying to find at a time. Now that's the main system. Uh, on the back we have a single connection cable, so you can wheel it into side on casters, and you can plug it into a customer's premises into a single connector. And then when the customer says, I want to move house, you unplug it, you plug our cable back into the house, and it's a normal house again. And you unplug it and take it with you. So the client can move house. The client says, oh, I'm not sure if I can justify the investment. I might be moving in five years. So no worries, it's plug and play. It's even on wheels, I see. It's on, it's on 600 kilo rated casters. Wow. Each wheel, so it's 2.4 tonnes of carry you can do. So you can drive it across your driveway, and it won't break the wheels. The next most important thing is down here. Uh, drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> in the old days, we used to use lithium batteries. Yep. That was a long time ago. We also used to use gas to light our homes. Okay? And my parents used to have a horse. Now, we use supercapacitors. So lithium batteries, they use electrochemical energy. To, they use electrochemistry to store energy. They have about a 90% round trip efficiency, typically. Lead acid batteries, maybe 70%, a bit more maybe depending on the brand. Flow batteries, 60 to 75 percent cycle life 2,000 to 4,000 maybe 10,000 if you treat them really nicely go across the super capacitors here 1 million cycles now if Nefertiti had a had one of these things it would still be working today one cycle per day is 2,700 years of use who was that Nefertiti right she was like um Kuten Carmen's mum oh it's early um storage adopter early Egyptian right 99.1 percent round trip efficiency versus 90 percent so there's almost no energy loss which means there's no heat 10-year warranty and the warranty is unconditional it's not based on cycles, it's not based on temperature because we can work up to 85 degrees Celsius and we can work down to negative 30. So if it's 85 degrees or above, you're in real problems anyway. If it's below 30, you're in real problems anyway. Outside of that, it still works, it just has a little bit of reduction in power. So basically, it works on planet Earth? It works on Earth, yeah. yeah. Um, there's almost no limit to charging and discharging. This is a 7.1 kilowatt hour module. And it can charge in 30 minutes and discharge in 30 minutes to empty. Wow. Hang on, just, just hold that. This it's 100% seven, usable. 7.1 7 7 kilowatt hours. Of usable energy. Yep, and you can discharge it in 30 minutes. So it's a 14... 0.2 kilowatt DC output and input. Wow. So if you put two of them in parallel, you've got 28 kilowatts of DC power available. This inverter can only make 18,000 watts of AC. So I'm just looking at these two units. You've got two different size this super the capacitors. This is the one. This is three and a half kilowatt hours. Yep. That weighs 75 kilos. Yep. So 3.55 kilowatt hours. This is 7.1 kilowatt hours. Yep. And inside the device are these. Oh, wow. Super capacitor. Now, what's clever about these is we can actually charge them in 30 seconds. So technically we could fill that in 30 seconds and empty it in 30 seconds, but it's too dangerous. So we restrict it to 30 minutes. Right. Yeah. Because you imagine discharging 7,000 watts in 30 seconds, what would happen? Yeah, yeah, a lot of Make current. a very big flash. <laughs> okay, so these devices are full of graphene, which is a single layer sheet of carbon. So, so, sorry, the graphene is... Gra graphene is a single layer sheet of carbon, so yep. of, of graphite. Yes. So basically, inside here is an enormous number of square metres of surface area. Yes. And the energy is stored on the carbon. So it's compostable. It's, it's made compostable. Of, it's made so, of paper. So, so end of life, you feed it to your worms. You can bury it. So it's made of carbon and paper, and it's wrapped in aluminium. Wow, that's so a pretty can, good end of life scenario. You can bury it. You're right. It's very safe. 
can't catch on fire unless you burn it. It doesn't burn itself. Um, if you damage it, like by dropping it, yep. it won't catch on fire. Any explosive gases? No, nothing, because it's only paper and carbon. Right. It's, it's, it's magic. So, <laughs> in the old days, we used to use lithium and lead. <laughs> I like that. But we don't anymore. Okay? It's brand new in the country. It's only been here for about three days. So, you can't buy it just yet. You know, deliveries we're expecting in January. Um, and it's available in 48 volts. Future versions will be programmable voltage. Wow. So, you log in and you tell it what it is. It's a 24 volt, 48 volt, or a 120 volt. We don't mind. Um, there's most, lots more stuff coming too from these guys, but technically speaking, you really cannot buy a lithium battery or a lead battery ever again because the cost per kilowatt hour life is so low on this. To give you an example, over 10 years, if you divide the cost of this product, it's about 13 cents per kilowatt hour life. That's 10 years under warranty. The design life is 45 years. So over 20 years, the cost per kilowatt hour life is now 6.5 cents. Right. Over 30 years, it's about 4 cents. Over 40 years, it's about 3 cents. So 3 cents per kilowatt hour life to store energy for 40 years is crazy. Is there any fade with time? There's no loss of power. So no power loss over time? One billion cycles. So if you're cycling it a thousand times a day, maybe. <laughs> Uh, that would be difficult to do. Um, so it's about a dollar per watt hour is the trade price. Wow. So similar price to LG Cam and Tesla Powerwall. Okay. You could argue one's a bit cheaper, one's a bit more expensive. Yep. But when you compare it to a million cycles and the real cost per kilowatt hour life, you really can't consider these anymore. Right. This is the first version. The next release will be twice as dense. So that will be 14 kilowatt hours. Wow, same physical size, yep. twice the energy density. And after that, it will be three times as dense. Cool. It's already on the drawing board. Great. So the future is supercapacitor storage. It's not dangerous. You can put it under your bed within reason. It's not flammable. It's not toxic. It's recyclable. It's environmentally friendly. And it's affordable. Great. So why would you buy anything else? <laughs> so that's the end of my presentation about supercapacitor storage. <laughs> There's a system that all includes it. It's called the Independence Day system. You can plug it in off-grid, you can plug it in on-grid, you can do generator start, you can do wind turbines, you can do micro-hydro. We don't really mind how you put the energy into it, you just got to find a way to do it. Great. Well, thanks very much, Paul. And look, um, just to reiterate, this is called the Independence Day system. Yes, and um, the government of Victoria has um, helped us out with some funding to commercialise this as a system. So as an installer, you'll be able to buy this as a kit, and it comes on casters, and then we'll build it in the warehouse, deliver it to your customer for you, and you just have to plug in the PV, plug in the AC and do the panels, and you can remotely program from home while you're drinking. Are you allowed to take it outside of Victoria, though? Uh, the government grant program, <laughs> the first 200 have to be installed in Victoria. Yeah part of the grant, but outside that you can buy as many as you like. Great. Cool. And, and you can do full three-phase as well. So if you want to do a three-phase system, you can just buy three cabinets. Well, I'm excited. Well, right. thanks very much, Paul. And my pleasure. Thanks, Clay.